What's up guys, it's Pretty and Picos here and today I decided to sit down with you guys to kind of talk a little bit about the different skincare types. I feel like a lot of times that's the first place that you need to start is kind of figuring out what your skincare type is and that way you can kind of figure out how to help it, what products would be best for it, um, the things that you can do to kind of help with that skincare type. So just a little disclaimer before I start the video. I wanted to let you guys know that just because you don't have these characteristics doesn't mean your skin isn't oily, it doesn't mean it's dry, it doesn't mean anything in particular. These are just the generic versions of the skincare type. So the first skincare type I'm going to talk about is oily. So a couple characteristics of people with oily skin, their skin is going to look more shiny, they're going to have more enlarged pores, their t-zone is going to be really oily, they could be more acne prone. Those are definitely things that you'll see more in the oily skin type. A big indicator for having oily skin is that your hair and scalp are more oily as well. So you definitely have to wash your hair more often if you have an oily skin type. So a couple essential oils that I found were really great for oily skin type are going to be things like frankincense, lemongrass, chamomile tea tree oil and rosemary oil as well. So all of these things are really gonna help with oil. They're gonna help balance the skin. It's gonna help kind of heal the skin. I'd say that my favorite out of all of those would be tea tree. I myself use tea tree in the bath. I use it in my hair. I use it on my skin as a spot treatment. So you can kind of pick and choose which one, give them a try and see which ones you like. So a couple of myths about oily skin is that oily skin is caused by eating a lot of fatty food. Yes, this is a myth and it's also kind of true at the same time. When you have a certain skin type, you're born with that skin type. You can kind of develop sensitivities, you can develop more oily spots when you do eat more fatty foods, but eating only fatty foods and eating foods that are bad for you will not change your skin type from another skincare type to oily skin. So it definitely can make your oil kind of run rampant all over your skin. It can make you break out and stuff like that, but it's not going to change your skin type from something else to oily. So that is definitely a big myth that I wanted to let you guys know was false. And another oily skin myth was that if you have oily skin, you should skip moisturizer. And this is absolutely wrong. Um, a lot of times I find my clients or my customers have oily skin, but they also have dehydrated skin. So drinking water, exfoliating, exfoliating is going to be really great for you because you can get those dead skin cells off. The dehydrated skin, you can help to slough those skin cells off and you can um, apply oils, moisturizer, stuff like that after and it's going to work better for your skin. But using the oils that I mentioned a little bit ago, doing that as oils and as moisturizers and things like that are going to really help your skin out. So if you have oily skin, it's definitely a myth if they tell you to skip moisturizer. The second one I wanted to talk about is the dry skin type. So a couple characteristics for dry skin type would be more flaky skin, scaly skin, just an overall dryness of the skin, dry to the touch. Um, there's some red patches, an overall redness to the skin. That's um, gonna be a couple of things that will indicate that you have more dry skin. So a couple of essential oils that I use on my skin, because I do have kind of dry skin, but a couple of oils that I use and would recommend for people with dry skin would be neem oil, rosehip oil, avocado oil and sweet almond oil. So all of these are super rich. They're very moisturizing and they're going to help lock in the hydration into your skin and really help with the flaky and the dry red patches. So a couple myths that I have heard about people with dry skin would be that you should not exfoliate when you have dry skin because some people think that if you exfoliate it's going to make your skin even drier and that is definitely not true. Kind of pick and choose the exfoliators that you use. You don't want to be using like a a super drying gel exfoliator. You kind of want to be using things that are going to nourish your skin and moisturize your skin as well as exfoliate. So things like the pumpkin enzyme mask from Banish, that's a perfect exfoliator to use. That's not going to dry your skin out and it's not going to have these harsh beads or sand or sugar or anything like that that could irritate your dry skin. It's going to kind of work chemically so the little pumpkin enzyme molecules in the pumpkin enzyme mask are really going to help to exfoliate your skin without over drying it. Another myth that I hear quite often is the more you moisturize the better. So that is not true at all. The more you moisturize kind of depends on your skin but from what I've learned the more that you moisturize 
It can actually make the skin flakes that you have from dry skin stick on your skin longer than necessary. So it makes it really hard to naturally slough off those skin cells. So you're just going to have a buildup of dry skin. It can actually make your skin feel and look more dry and dull. So you definitely want to be exfoliating and moisturizing, but you don't want to be overly moisturizing so your skin can actually take a breath. And you can get those products underneath the dead skin cells and you can really help fight the dry skin. For our third skin type, I wanted to talk about sensitive skin. So I definitely have sensitive skin. My skin is kind of finicky, but sensitive skin is a harder one because a lot of people do have sensitivities in their skin. It's possible for any skin type to get sensitivities, but this sensitivity that I'm talking about is specifically the skin type. A few characteristics of sensitive skin would be that the skin is irritated, the skin is red, it feels more delicate, you have smaller pores, more normal sized pores because your skin is an overproducing oil. You're gonna have probably some broken capillaries around your nose, on your cheeks, and that just kind of means that your skin is sensitive, it's irritated, it's red, and something else that can also indicate sensitive skin would be when you use the wrong products or you use products that aren't good for your skin type that you do find that your skin gets irritated and even more red than usual. So a few essential oils that I've tried and that um, I'll tell my clients to use that have sensitive skin are going to be argan oil, primrose oil, lavender oil, and jasmine. So all of these are more calming. They're not as heavy oils. They're very soothing on the skin. And they're going to help heal your sensitivities and really help to dull down the redness and kind of just soothe your skin. And especially oils like lavender and jasmine, they're going to really help de-stress you as well because I feel like people with sensitive skin, sometimes a lot of their sensitivities and their redness can be caused by stress as well. It just shows up more easily on people with sensitive skin because your skin is already uh, has a pinkish tone to your skin. So I feel like having that kind of aromatherapy and that spa-like feel is really going to help those people with sensitive skin. A couple of myths about sensitive skin is that only people with dry skin have sensitivities in their skin. And that's pretty false. I know people with dry skin have sensitivities, but that's not the only skincare type that can get sensitivities in their skin. People develop sensitivities due to their diet, their environment, even using like overly harsh acne products like for people with acne and stuff like that, you could definitely develop some sensitivities in the skin. So saying that people that only have dry skin are the only ones that get uh, sensitivities is definitely a myth. And then another myth that I heard about sensitive skin is that sensitive skin is only caused by allergies. So this is a myth due to the fact that allergies can cause a skin reaction. It could definitely cause some sensitivities, but it's not going to take you from having a dry skin type to having a sensitive skin type. It's definitely going to be there since you can remember it's going to be something that you're born with. So having allergies can definitely affect your skin, but it's not going to change your skincare type from dry to sensitive or from oily to sensitive. It definitely can have its effects on you, but it's not going to change your skin entirely. The fourth skincare type that I wanted to talk about is combination, and it's the most common skincare type there is. So a few characteristics about that skincare type would be that there's medium-sized pores, the skin is a little more oily throughout the T-zone, but the rest of the skin may be smooth and soft kind of around the cheeks, or it could be dry like mine, and you definitely will have more blackheads commonly found on the nose, whereas the oily skin will be like on the, the nose, the chin, and the cheeks. So a couple of essential oils that I found were really great for combination skin are going to be oils like grapeseed oil, tea tree oil, jojoba oil and eucalyptus oil as well. So all of these are going to be antibacterial, they're going to be smoothing, they're going to be really great spot treatments that you can use on your oily parts of your skin as well as like the great seed oil be great for any part of your skin. A lot of these are pH balancing, they're going to really help fight the acne, they're going to help fight the oiliness but they're not going to overly dry your skin. A myth that I thought you guys would find interesting about combination skin was the fact that many people think that having combination skin is going to make it really hard for you to find skincare and that's actually not true. A combination skin is the most common skincare type so there is a lot of skincare out there for people with combination skin. You actually get to play around a little bit. You can use products for more oily skin, you can use products that are good for dry skin, you can use products that help with both. You can kind of get the best of both worlds and really soak yourself in oil and make sure you're exfoliating and doing fun masks and doing stuff that other skincare types might not get to do just because you do have a little bit 
of skin from each type. So the last skin type that I wanted to talk about is normal skin type. Normal skin is kind of a harder one only because it's the most rare. There's not a lot of people I know that have more normal skin. There might be people that have like really great skin but often you'll find that they have drier skin or their skin is more oily. So people with normal skin type will have more of an even toned skin. They'll have more of an even textured skin as well. So there's not a lot of noticeable issues with the skin. There's not a lot of redness or irritation. There's there's not a lot of acne. Their skin has like a nice healthy glow to it and I am definitely jealous of people with normal skin. <sighs> So that does make it the rarest skin type that there is. So a couple of oils that I thought would be good for people with normal skin would be marula oil, neem oil, chamomile oil, and lemon oil. So all of these are going to really help balance the skin. They're going to help maintain the normal skin that you have. They're not going to make your skin oily and they're not going to dry it out. They're going to help with any fine lines and wrinkles that you might have. Um, and they're going to help kind of keep the skin normal, keep the balance in the pH levels, kind of help your skin overall. So a big, big myth about people that have normal skin is that people with normal skin don't have to use any skincare or they have like a little skincare routine and not like a big one like people with dry skin or people with oily skin. So this is definitely a myth that I wanted to let you guys know about in case you did have more normal skin. So it's definitely not true at all. You need to be doing skincare no matter what your skincare type is. Um, and even if you're not finding problems that you see now, we like to call that preventative skincare. So you want to start doing skincare now to prevent problems in the future. So if you don't wear your sunscreen now, if you're not moisturizing now, if you're not doing things now in 10, 15, 20 years, you're going to start seeing that your skin is going to start sagging. You're going to have fine lines and wrinkles. You're going to see sunspots. And definitely people that have more of a normal skin type are going to see problems later in the future because their skin looks fine now, but you can't really say what your skin is going to look like in 10 to 15 years. So definitely a big myth. You don't have to use skincare when you have normal skin. My recommendation to you is to find a couple of products that will help keep your skin healthy and some anti-aging products to help with the issues that you might see later on in the future. And then another normal skin myth that I heard was that your skin always looks amazing. Now I bet we all wish that that was true, but we all know from experience that no matter what your skin looks like, no matter who you are, your skin has good days and it has bad days. So just because your skin looks amazing now doesn't mean that it'll always look amazing. It doesn't mean that you'll never have any problems. It doesn't mean that one day your skin will be dry or or one day that your skin won't be oily. You kind of have to take it one day at a time when you have normal skin, just the way you would take it with every other skin type as well. You kind of want to find those products. You want to take care of your skin. You want to do the best things that you can for your skin. So in the future, your skin will look just as amazing as it does today. All right, well, I think that kind of concludes this video. This is the first episode of my series, Science of Skin. So I kind of wanted to just let you guys know about the skin types and stuff like that to kind of set up a foundation for the rest of my videos. So I really want to hear from you guys what your skincare type is and what products you use and if you like oils just as much as I do, um, I'd really love to hear from you guys in the comments. I would also love to hear more suggestions for videos. I would love to hear any questions, comments you have about my videos. Um, you can leave those all in the comment box or you can follow me on Instagram. It's pretty in underscore picos, so P-C-O-S. You can ask me any questions, you can DM me. I'm definitely super active on Instagram, so I will be there waiting for your questions. So don't forget to subscribe to the Acne channel to see more of my videos. Next month, I'll be coming out with another Science of Skin video to kind of talk about something else that's more on the science-y side. I am a licensed esthetician, so I do feel like the science part behind skin is my favorite. It's something that I have experience with and that I really love and have a big passion for. So I definitely will love to do more of these videos and kind of talk more about um, the science behind what makes your skin tick. Subscribe to the Acne channel and hit that bell notification button so that you'll be notified anytime that we post another video. And I can't wait to see you guys next time. Bye!